Nicholas Montez, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel, here, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back here together again. Um, I'm very excited to come back this week because I technically only made like five videos last week, um, which was kind of a cool thing for me since I have been watching pretty much the entire MCU. I'm literally I I finished Black Panther on Saturday, also Infinity War, and then I finished Ant Man the Wasp today, and then finally watching Captain Marvel. I mean, it's not like a leading up to Shang-Chi or anything. Just wanted to watch it, but I'm back and I'm ready to do some more videos. And today we're doing an MCU list. And th this is going to be a list about my top five MCU backstories that I want to see happen. Basically, anyth anything that a character has talked about in their past that requires superhero stuff, that's technically what's going to be for this list. So with that said, let's get started talking about my top five MCU backstories that I want to see happen in the MCU in a movie or a TV series. All right, real quick before we get started with this number five, I just gotta say, there's gonna be some spoilers for Black Widow in this part. So if you haven't seen Black Widow yet, just skip to number four. There's time codes down in the description. Just skip to number four because there's some spoilers for Black Widow in here. Okay, are you guys gone? All right, good. So, in Black Widow, we are introduced to the character David Har to the to David Harbour's character Red Guardian, which if you don't know who Red Guardian is, he's basically this Russian super soldier. He's basically the Russian version of Captain America, uh, because they have a similar suit and they're both super soldiers. But not only that, but they also lead two teams of superheroes. Captain America, of course, lead the Avengers, and Red Guardian leads the team called Winter Guard, which are basically like the, which are basically a Russian version of the Avengers. And um, before Black Widow came out, I actually knew about the about the Winter Guard and Red Guardian because I remember seeing the Red Winter Guard in the Avengers Assemble series when the Avengers were kind of like split, and Captain America, Hulk, Falcon, and Black Widow they were like after this key thing. And the Winter Guard were technically known as bad as bad guys in that episode, but in the end they 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 came out as heroes. And uh, the reason why I'm excited to see this is because I want to see Red Guardian like I, I want to see Red Guardian with the Russian shield. I want to see him lead the team of, of the Winter Guard. I want to see all of that. And not only that, but we also saw a Winter Guard member, Ursa, which if you don't know. Um, he's actually that that big drunk bear guy. Uh, the guy when, when that scene where Red Guardian was arm wrestling those guys, and he broke that that big guy's hand. That last guy, that that was one of the Winter Guard members. Which I'm not really understanding why he was in the prison in the first place. But if they give us a movie or a TV series or something about the Red Guardian and the Winter Guard, I'm down for it. It probably won't be the best thing ever, but. I want to see these characters, and I want to see these characters interact. Probably like in a flashback or something. I don't know. Maybe in the Blackwood, in the Hawkeye series. Who knows? But that's what I want to see. So if you if you're understanding what I'm trying to say here is basically I want to see the past of Asgard. Now I know in all the Thor movies, including Thor Ragnarok, we've seen stories of Asgard, like famous stories in the past. With the first Thor, we 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 saw this the backstory of of the war between the Frost Giants and the Asgardians in Thor: The Dark World. We got to see the war between the Asgardians and the, and the Dark Elves, and then in um, 
Thor Ragnarok, we actually get to see how the Nine Realms and um, began and how, you know, Hela was, was um, imprisoned by Odin and the Valkyries. But, all, but for me, <clears throat> I think, n n now for me, I, I, I personally liked all those scenes. I personally loved the Dark Elves sequence and the Frost Giant sequence. And of course the, um, Dark, the Thor Ragnarok one where they tell the history of Asgard and stuff. How, how the Nine Realms came to be, uh, except it was just paintings on a wall. It wasn't like a vision, it wasn't like actual like people moving. But what I mean by a past Asgardian stories, I want to see like Odin, like one ma because in the Thor films and Th Thor and Thor: The Dark World, I gotta be honest with you. Even though <clears throat> Anthony Hopkins played a really good role as Odin, I gotta be honest with you, his his persuasion not persuasion his his way of doing things is just weird and honestly i kind of agree with thor that he's just sitting around while asgard falls and i totally see why thor understands that and it's like he doesn't want to start wars anymore like his pers like his perspective is just so um confusing for me so if they somehow decide to do a odin series where they somehow de-age Anthony Hopkins, I would be all, and I will hopefully, we could probably see like, you know, freak, um, um, Rene Russo, younger too, and probably Odin's younger, younger warriors, um, older warriors three. I just want to see, uh, Odin's story and how he came to be this great king of Asgard. So if you're understanding what I'm trying to say here with Winter Sol past Winter Soldier missions, is really just a show where we get to see, or at least like a short, where we get to see the best mission that Winter Soldier had to take on. Because, I mean, I, I know you've seen some of them, but like, I want to see like why he does this. Like, why did, like, I know we've seen one in Falcon and Soldier, where he hunts down that guy that is Yori's son, and then he also killed Howard and Maria Stark because they had, like, this super soldier serum to put into these other super winter soldiers, uh, but I want to see a short where he, where he, I want to see why he does this, like, obviously he's corrupted by Hydra, but why, like, what is the specific, the specific reason why that happens like why, why why does he go and kill those people like what did they do for to hydra like was that kid a threat i want to find out so i'm not sure if it's gonna come but i want it to come because it's probably gonna be the best thing ever probably some and more when best winter soldier action So in Falcon War Soldier, we are introduced to a new character, Isaiah Bradley, which back in the past when Steve Rogers was in the ice and Hydra made Bucky Barnes the Winter Soldier, the, the US Army needed someone to start to make new super soldier serum so that way they could use that soldier and go out and fight Hydra and the Winter Soldier and none of them worked, so Isaiah Bradley was actually one of the only people that that the Super Soldier Serum worked on. So they used him to go stop the Winter Soldier. But then after he became a, he saved the world from the Winter Soldier. He was put in he was put in jail for almost like 30 years, and he was tested on. On um, he, he people took his blood and it came into his cell and all that stuff, and. Honestly, I love Isaiah Bradley. He's probably my favorite character of all of Phase Four, um, of all the heroes in Phase Four. Um, he does. He's just so tragic. But beyond that, I, and of course, I love his closing in the Falcon War Soldier show. But even even more than that, I want to see this guy in action. Like I, it's just one of the scenarios where I want to see the battle. Like honestly, I imagine him in Captain America suit. 
fighting with your soldier on a train. I don't know why, and like, it's kind of like, I imagine it a fight on the train, like in the fight before when Bucky died. On the train that he died. I, I don't know why, but I just imagine that, and it would look so cool. And you have like awesome action in it, and the music will be awesome too. But I don't know. That's just me. But hey, that's my theory. Um, and probably some, and probably fight some other guys. Who knows? But that's what I want to see. Now, ever since I saw Ant Man and the Wasp and the first Ant Man, this is something I've always wanted to see. Now, I know we have had some de-aging with Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer in the Ant-Man films, but I want to see them in action. Like, in Ant-Man and the Wasp in the trailer, we saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, like Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne's Wasp in Ant-Man. We saw them, like, fighting someone, and that was actually going to be the opening, one of the opening sequences to the film. And that would have been so cool to see because... That's what you like from these movies. You, you like to see the shrinking and the, uh, like, just really cool action. And, like, I want to see them in action. Like, I I, I wish we could have gotten more. And then we actually get a shot of them, like, in the suits. But, like, I want to see more of that. I don't know how we could do it. Probably a series? With, like, with the whole show just de-aged these characters? I don't know. But I want to see them in the suits, in action, fighting someone, I don't know who it could be, probably Claw, since Claw is one of their main villains. But other than that, that's really just the thing I wanna see, and it's always been something I've always wanted to see since the first Ant-Man, and Ant-Man and the Wasp. So that's my top five MCU backstories I wanna see happen in the MCU. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My Instagram is Marvel6, and my TikTok is MarvelFan. If you guys don't understand those names, head to my bat section to follow me on all social medias. I'm also on Letterbox. It's the same as on Instagram. My underscore is six underscore. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.